Okay, now we're going to look at the coolant system. We have to uh, use uh, some sort of coolant to cool down the big load condenser, which is sitting right there. So the steam from the boiler and also exhaust steam from the turbo generator are, is going to come back in on that line there into this cooler and it'll condense the steam. So to do that, we're using a propylene glycol coolant mixture. And if I follow this back it's to where it's coming from, the line goes up like that. There's a magnetic flow meter to measure the coolant flow. And it comes back over to here, and down to there. This is the pump that's pumping the coolant. If I follow that back, it goes into a glycol storage tank. All of the coolant that's discharging from this load condenser, which is over there, is going to come off, go through a control valve, which is going to control the coolant flow, and go back into the storage tank. So eventually, the storage tank is going to heat up. So, what we've got to do is we've got to cool that coolant down. And to do that, we've got rooftop coolers on the upstairs, so we've got to go up onto the roof. And the two fluid coolers are taking air, running air across the coils to lower the temperature and drop it down. And the coolant is returning from here, okay, into the actual coolant tank, it's our storage tank. And the coolant is discharging out of there and going upstairs actually comes over here and down into this pump which is going to be circulated upstairs okay so we've got the flow and there's a flow meter on there later we're going to actually on the controls set the flow for about 2,000 liters a minute when we're putting steam into the load condenser and just for purposes of keeping everything running at night, we just knock it down to 500 meters a minute and let it sit there. Okay, so we're up on the roof of uh, SE8, and we've actually got two coolers. I don't know whether my laser is going to work out here in the sunlight. Well, it does. This one that I'm pointing at right now is an evaporative cooler, and it's used in the instrumentation department for processing. The ones for the boiler is this great big bank so we're going to take a walk down here and there's there's two of them one right here this is the east fan and then this one over here is the west fan and then the upper section which is above these fans doesn't show up very well the laser but it's just a whole bunch of, of tubes thin tubes that are being cooled so the coolant is coming up goes along on this first line here up to the top goes through a whole set of tubes to the to a header at the other end and then returns on the lower ones down here so inlet outlet and then that comes back is combined comes down through this line and goes back to the storage tank that we saw a few moments ago so these fluid coolers are cooling the storage tank down now over this side Inside this cabinet are two variable frequency drives which are controlling the speeds of those uh, fans that are up there and typically we'll be running them at low speed down around 30 Hertz and then we will take them up to 60 Hertz okay we're inside the fan enclosure and you can see how slow that fan is rotating right now it's down on its low end speed even when we're running at full load on the Nebraska boiler going to the load condenser, these fans are only up at half speed. So we've got lots of capacity. 
this cooler has been designed to handle the capacity of both boilers at maximum load plus an additional 3,000 pounds an hour of steam. Okay, now you may have noticed when we were looking at the coolant lines coming in and coming out of this cooler that there was temperature sensors, there was temperature probes sitting in there. And those are all running on resistance thermal detectors and they're coming into this foundation field bus 848T transmitter. And you can see the RELCOM mega block down below here and our field bus signal is coming up from down below uh, into this thing and then from here it connects into the actual transmitter itself. Foundation field bus is taking a digital signal and it's now taking one, two, three, four, five temperatures and sending them down on one pair of wires. There's actually more on this segment as we get downstairs. Uh, things like that magnetic flow meter that we looked at that was looking at the flow coming up here. That is also running foundation field bus. So one of the things that you'll see coming up on the operating screens is that we're actually looking at the inlet temperatures. So there's an inlet temperature there, sensor coming in the coolant from the storage tank. And then as we've heated that coolant up, you'll see it discharging back out and there is the discharge temperature. Those are Rosemont um, hockey puck style um, transmitters with RTD sensors on them. So they're very accurate and uh, they just, they're blind because nobody can read them anyway from down here, but they're coming up on the operator screen and you'll see that when we get operating.